Okay, so looking at the graph, we can see that the x-intercept is right there at x equals 1. Okay, um, we could have set the numerator equal to 0 and gotten that x equals 1 without looking at the function. Now, let's think about what it means to be an x-intercept. Okay, if you are on the x-axis, your y-coordinate is always 0. And that means that's where the function equals 0, or if your function is a fraction, what is the only way that a fraction can equal 0? Well, if the numerator equals 0, because if the denominator is 0, then it's undefined. Okay, if the denominator is 0, it's undefined, but if the numerator is 0, then the fraction can equal 0. So let's set the numerator equal to 0 to find your x-intercepts. Okay? What about the two vertical asymptotes? We know that they're a negative 1 and a positive 3. Where could that have come from? Okay, let's think back to the last example we just did. Okay, <clears throat> we found that there was a vertical asymptote at x equals 30. Where did we say the 30 came from? The 750 minus 25 equal to zero. That was which part of the rational function, the numerator or the denominator? The denominator. So the vertical asymptotes come from the denominator equaling zero. If you factor that denominator, that denominator factors into um, x minus three times x plus one if you set those pieces equal to zero and solve them for x, you get x equals positive 3 and x equals negative 1. Okay, then they asked us about the domain. As we kind of mentioned the last time, anything else will give us a, a, a y value except for the vertical asymptote, except for negative 1 and positive 3. So we've got to throw those out. Part D starts talking about uh, something called a horizontal asymptote, and it explains it. It says that the values of x decrease without lower bounds. So that means as our x values are going over here, as far as we can go to the left, as x is going towards negative infinity, um, the graph of the function gets closer and closer to the x-axis. Okay, so let me pull the... Um, let me look at the picture here again in a second. Okay, so <clears throat> as we're following this function, as our x values are headed over here to the left, now our graph stops with this graph for us, but we can keep going with this. Okay, our y values are getting closer and closer to the x axis. They never really touch it, but they get closer and closer to it. Now, this is a sort of hint from below. As our x values are increasing without bounds, or as they are headed to the right, or as they are approaching positive infinity, they are getting closer and closer to the x-axis. They're going to go above this time, but they are getting closer and closer to the x-axis. We call that a horizontal asymptote. It describes the behavior of the function. Now notice, here in the middle of the graph, we do cross that vertical asymptote, okay? But on the ends, we will not cross the so it's possible to cross a horizontal asymptote, okay? But really what a horizontal asymptote is, it describes the behavior of the extreme ends of the function. Uh, and then they ask, how could you have determined that from the equation? Honestly, I don't really know how you're supposed to come up with that on your own unless you've heard about it before. Um, but it turns out what you do is you compare the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. In this case, the numerator is degree 1, okay, x minus 1 is degree 1, x squared minus 2, x minus 3 is degree 2, so because the denominator has a greater degree than the numerator, then you have the horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. So there are three relationships here, okay, either your numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, or the numerator can be greater than the degree of the denominator, or they can be equal. So here are three simple examples of those relationships.
So, for example, if we do have x over x squared, or we can flip it over x squared of x, um, and we'll do it equal to the negative 5 x cubed over 8 x cubed, then this is what our horizontal asymptotes would be. When the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is y equal to 1. When the numerator is greater, then we don't have a horizontal asymptote. But when they're equal, it's the ratio of the leading coefficients that make them stand out more. So let's think about this. The horizontal asymptotes are describing the behavior as we go to the extreme ends. So as x is approaching positive infinity and as x is approaching negative infinity. So let's just try to imagine here for a second that x is equal to infinity. Now I know infinity is not a number, but just think about it being a really massively huge number. So if we've got a really massively huge number in the numerator, but in the denominator, we have that really massively huge number squared. Wouldn't that be even more massively huge, right? Okay, so what happens to an overall number when you divide by a really, really big number? What's the result? What's the result when you divide by a really, really, really big number? is a really small number, right? Okay. Really small number, okay? So that's why the horizontal asymptote in this case is zero, because your result is so, so small that it's essentially zero. Okay, the same would go if we flip the negative one over. All right? <clears throat> now, flip that relationship over. We've got the really, really massively huge number on the top, and it's still being on the bottom, but not quite as big, okay? So when you divide a really, really big number by a not as big number, the result is still a pretty big number, right? So you divide 100 by 2, you still get 50. It's still a pretty big number. Well, you magnify that by infinity, you're still going to get a big number. So that's why we don't have horizontal asymptotes. That is not approaching a particular value. It's kind of like with our geometric series that we just did, okay? Um, when our common ratio was uh, less than one, our terms were getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They were approaching zero. But when the common ratio was greater than one, they were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They weren't headed towards a specific number. Um, so in that case, there was no horizontal asymptote. What if we do this case, the last one? When the degrees are the same, well, it's like we've got infinity cubed over infinity cubed. That's the same thing. They kind of cancel out, and all you're left with are these coefficients that are in front of those numbers, and that's why you end up with the horizontal asymptote being y equals 5 over 8. Okay? Um, but you've got to make sure that your functions are written in standard form just so that you can very simple examples to prove there's more to the function. Okay, obviously. Focusing on the term that has the highest exponent, the numerator or the denominator. Okay, so that's what you focus on when you ask about horizontal asymptotes. All right.